In this video, we are going to discuss the human cannonball problem. The problem says that you have a spring inside a barrel which has a length of 4 meter and you place a human cannonball of mass 68.4 kilogram on top of the spring. Then you lower the spring with the help of an external force to a height of 0 0.7 meter such that the total compression in the spring becomes negative 3.3 meter. Then you release the external force. Then you remove the external force to release the spring. And the human cannonball is fired up to reach a height of 7.5 meter. The height of the human is 1.75 meter. And we need to find what is the value of spring constant needed to accomplish this stunt. So we are going to use the law of conservation of energy to solve a problem like this. And the law of conservation of energy says that if you have any two point in motion, sum of total energy, And the law of conservation of energy says that if you have any two point in motion, total energy at those two points is always equal. So if I have point one and two, energy at one, total energy at one will be equal to total energy at two. So for our question here, I'm going to select those two points as B and E. And we will write total energy at B equals total mechanical energy at E. Now, why did we choose these two points? I want to calculate the spring constant. If I want the spring constant K, I need to use the position where my spring has been used because I would be able to use work done by the spring only when the spring is stretched or compressed. And only at position B is the spring compressed. At every other position, the spring is at equilibrium position, which we take as zero. Then we take point E because E is the maximum height in motion. And when you are at maximum height, your velocity is equal to zero. Velocity at E is zero. So when velocity becomes zero, I don't need to do extra steps to calculate this V. So we will take total energy at B equals total energy at E. Our total mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic plus potential energy at those point. So we will write total energy at B as kinetic plus potential equals same for E, kinetic plus potential. Now, what are the kinetic and potential values at this point? If you look at point B, velocity at point B is zero. Now, kinetic energy is half mv squared. If my velocity is zero, that means kinetic energy at that point is also zero. So we get that we get this term over here as zero. What is potential energy at B? Potential energy at B is a sum of two potential energy. One because of the work done by the spring. And the other because we are below the reference point. Gravitational potential energy because we are below our reference point. So UB is a sum of two potential energy. Potential energy of the spring, which we will write as half KYB squared. This position, negative 3.3, we will call it YB. Y because it is along the Y axis. B because this is the compression of the spring at position B. So potential energy or work done by the spring is half KYB square. And that by gravity 
is MGH. So I will write it as MGYP because that's the distance that is below the reference point. Now let's do the same thing for E. At point E, again, my velocity is zero. So kinetic energy at this point will be zero. Potential energy here, we have only the gravitational potential energy because the spring is at equilibrium position. So work done by the spring is zero. Whereas you are above the reference point, you are at a height above the reference point. I will call this height H. So I will write the gravitational potential energy as MGH. Now we can rearrange these terms to calculate K. I can rearrange this to move MGYB on the other side. So let's do that. Of KYB squared equals MGH minus MGYB. MG is a common factor for both of these terms, so we can take that out as common. And we write half KYB squared equals MG H minus YB. Then we multiply by 2 and divide by YB squared to find K. K will be equal to MG H minus YB divide by y b squared into 2. I know y b is negative 3.3 meter, which is the compression of the spring. What is my h? h is the distance that the human cannonball covers when it has been launched from the spring. So it is this distance from the top of the human, from the head of the human to the maximum height, to the top position. This distance is my h. So I can find by h by subtracting the maximum height and the height of the human. Because that is the height the human cannonball covers. When we are considering the height he covers, we need to subtract his height from the position he reaches. So my H will be 7.5, which is the maximum height here, minus the height of the human. And the height of the man is given as 1.75. So we will do 7.5 minus 1.75, which gives me 5.75 meter. So this is the height H I'm going to use here. Now let's substitute. A will be equal to 2. Mass of the human is 68.4. G is 9.81. Height is 5.75 minus YB is negative 3.3. The white line, negative 3.3 squared. When you solve this, you get the value of K as 1115.26 newton per meter which you can write as 1.1 times 10 to the power 3 newton per meter now if you do not wish to rearrange your term you can use shift solve at this point here So this is the step where you can substitute your value and you can use shift solve to calculate K. But before you use shift solve here, you will still have to find the value of H using these steps. And once you find your H, you can calculate K by using shift solve. Part two of this question wants you to find what is the speed of the human? Human cannonball. 
as he passes the equilibrium position of the spring. So in part two, in problem two, they want us to find what is the speed of the human when he reaches the equilibrium position, which is position C. We need to find his speed over here, Vc. So again, we are going to use the law of conservation of energy. I'm going to repeat those steps, but this time I'm going to choose point C and point E. C because that's the point where I want to find my velocity. So we write total energy at C equals total energy at E. Total energy at C is sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy at C. And we do the same thing for E, sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now let's find what is the kinetic and potential energy at these points. At C, my human is at the reference point, zero. He is not raised to any height above the reference point. As well as my spring is in equilibrium position. So potential energy at point C will be zero. On the other hand, we have kinetic energy because the human cannonball is moving. He has velocity, so there will be kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy we will write as half m vc squared. At point E, since my velocity is zero, potential energy at point E is zero. Sorry. At point E, since my velocity is zero, kinetic energy at point E is zero. But the human cannonball is now raised to a height h above the reference point. So you will have potential energy. And we will write this potential energy as mgh. h is the same as we calculated in the previous problem, which is 5.75 meter. I will write that here. H equals 5.75 meter. Let us now rearrange this term. You can cancel off the M here. It's present on both the side. And then we get V square over 2 equals G into H. V square equals 2GH. And that will give me V as square root. Gh. Now you can substitute the value square root 2 times 9.81 into h, which is 5.75. That gives me the value of v as 10.6 meter per second. 